Shea Bear 1000 here. First of all, I want to get this out of the way because it's very important to me. Ben, Captain Eggbeard, thank you. Thank you very much. Miss Lottie Daw, thank you. Um, they know why. You got my back, and I really, really appreciate that. Now, that out of the way, let's get on to something. I want to explain something to the people that think it's so easy to chill and calm down first of all check this clip out so here's what I ordered replacement replacement headlight and corner light kit driver and passenger there's the part number vehicle info required to guarantee fit already did that vehicle Fitment 2001 to 2004 Toyota Tacoma, all submodels, all engines. <clears throat> Location driver and passenger side. Components two corner lights, two headlights. Assembly with bulbs, color, finish, clear lens. Recommended use OE replacement. Quantity sold. Kit. That's the key word here, guys. Kit. Nowhere else on this page, nowhere does it say that they're going to break it up and send it to you different times. Nowhere. Now, after seeing that clip, nothing on there about the parts being separate, sold separately. Nothing. So, I, what I'm going to explain to you is how easy this is for some people to chill out, calm down, okay? First of all, that email that I showed you guys in the last video, this email right here, this email was sent after after the item was shipped okay after after they received payment after the payment was cleared after after it was shipped then and only then did they send me the email stating well you may not you know hmm can you get a hold of them you can't call them I read that to you you can't call them. They're experiencing a, experience a, a high volume of, of, of inquiries. Bullshit. Why, why, you got that, why, why do you have that many people trying to call you 24-7 that you can't answer the phone? Why does it take 48 to 72 hours to return my email to explain to me why I'm getting these parts here and there. When I ordered that as a kit, that's right, a kit. Now, if you go, you want taco night, you go to the store and buy a taco kit. Do you have to go down each and every aisle? Okay, I gotta go get the soft tacos. I gotta go get the hard, the crunchy tacos. Okay, now I gotta go get the sauce. Where's it at? Now I gotta go get the seasoning. And buy the kit like that? No. Why is this any different? Kit. Boom. It comes together. It's all together in a kit. This was not bought on Amazon. This was not bought on eBay. This was not bought on Craigslist or any of those stupid places. This is a legitimate car parts place. In fact, it's called carparts.com. That's all they do. That's what they deal in. It's not like one day they're selling doll dresses, the next day pocket knives, some days they're selling starters for Chevys. No, this is all they do. They sell and ship auto parts. Okay. Now that out of the way, you know, I mean, uh, so what do you do? Just calm down and chill. It's in the mail. 
Now the person told me it's in the mail. How the fuck do you know that? I don't know that. They probably don't even know it. And you damn sure don't know it. It's in the mail. How the fuck? Prove it to me. Send me a tracking number. Send me an invoice. Send me something. No, you can't. Because you don't fucking know. You know, I just asked, well, maybe, is it on back order? Chill. No, you chill. It's not on back order. It's just coming out of different warehouses, which I was not made aware of until after this part was shipped. I'm thinking I'm getting all. I'm getting all my parts. Let's put this in another perspective, guys. For the people who think I need to calm down and chill, let's see how chill and calm you would be if you bring your car to me, somebody backed into it, headlights are busted. I can get those for you. Uh, okay, here's the price. The parts should be in Thursday, so, you know, Friday at the latest, your, your car will be done. I'll get them thrown in there for you. I'll give you a call. Okay. I call you on Thursday. Well, we've got an issue. Only one part came in. Okay, well, when's the other ones coming in? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You know, I, I'm your customer. You don't know when my parts are coming in. No, no, I don't. Uh, what did you call a company? Yeah, and I, I can't get through to them. I sent them an email, but it's going to take 48 to 72 hours before they even get back with me, if they do. So I have no idea when your parts are coming in. And you're sitting there thinking, this is our only vehicle. My wife uses this for work and sometimes gets home well after dark. And you're going to tell me you can only put one headlight in. Huh. Yeah. Chill. It's okay. You're going to say, okay, I'm calm. I'm chill. Just give me a call sometime through the summer if you find out anything. Yeah, different perspective now, huh? It's kind of the same way here. You know, why should I take one new bulb that costs 45 to $48 anywhere around here to go buy for the one bulb that I now gave $82 for as far as I'm concerned until the other parts get in, take the risk of accidentally touching it or something or breaking it, putting it in, and then taking it back out when I do get the other parts to put the new parts in. Okay, we'll just throw that part in. Yeah, throw a brand new headlight lens in with one from 2003 that's all yellowed and tarnished well alright I'll just spend about three hours of my day getting that cleaned up to kind of somewhat match the other one yeah stay calm chill it's that simple huh well I'm gonna go on with something here I'm gonna tell you guys something okay in, in the last four or five months about me Keep, keep in mind, what I'm going to tell you is not even a grain of salt in the ocean. Not even close. Okay? But since I don't have about three or four days to keep your attention on this, I'm going to kind of narrow it down a little bit. In the past, since, since I moved down here in three years, in three years, you know, I moved down to Florida from Ohio, in three years, I have lost 11, 11 friends in three years who were in Ohio. I can't get up there to pay them my respects, to pay the family respects. I can't do it. I got to do it over media or over the phone. Seven of them was within the last six months. That's right, seven. Good friends, not just acquaintances, friends, people I grew up with schoolmates you know we hung out together friends okay now in the last four or five months let's go here now not to mention you know before the last four or five months you know me having uh, two major strokes and over a hundred over a hundred mini strokes okay this is after a second major stroke. I get told, you know, I got a team of doctors on me. My case is rare. I'm one in a thousand. I am five times, three to five times more at risk of having another major stroke than 999 other people, stroke victims. Okay? 
doctor feels bad. He remembers. He knows who I am. He comes in, puts his hand on my shoulder, says, hello, Mr. Schumann. That ain't good. Puts his hand on my shoulder. Well, here we go. Here's the news. What's going on? Well, because he remembered me asking about going back to work. He can never work again. That's out. You're going to have to take an early retirement, whatever you got to do, but you cannot work again. Okay, well, what are some of the things I can't do? Well, he said it's easier just to tell you what you can do. Hmm, that's not good. Just some of the things I can't do. There's lists, and it's four or five pages long of the things I cannot do. First one is no lifting. That's the first one. Anything over five pounds. Not ten. Five. Do not lift for a certain amount of time. Be careful when carrying groceries in. So this, this whole, whole list goes on and on and on, right? There's like a whole page of stuff before it even gets into smoking, so I don't want to hear that. I cut down from three packs a day to less than half a pack a day. I'm not stopping no more. I'm not going to quit everything and lay down and die. You know, I can't help. What what am I supposed to do? You know, what am I supposed to do? So I'm going to have to file for disability at 51 years old. Okay? That's hard not to swallow when, when you know, you grew up working in your dad's junkyard at 10 years old. He would give you an alternator, go up to that red car up there and bring me this part. That's how I, that's how I learned. Find this part, bring it back to me. Well, Dad, there's another part in the way. Take it off. Get to this part and bring it to me. Bring it to him. Now take this one, go put it back on. Well, Dad, it's no good. Well, one of the main things you got to remember about part swapping is you're going to have to eventually put something back on. I know it's no good, but you got to learn to put it back on, which is a lot harder. That's how I learned. Not to mention... All the schooling I've had in the later years. Now, when I was 13, I swapped a six-cylinder engine out of a 1953 Chevrolet, and I put a 350 Pontiac engine in it at 13 years old. Okay? That's a good story in itself. So, I'm used to work, you know. So what am I supposed to do while monkey's busting her ass, stay at home and sit on mine? No. It's not going to happen. So this, you know, this news is very bad news to me. You know, so what do I got to do? You know, I can sit here in this house, do nothing, sit around be lazy, because I want to live longer, go out to check the mail and get hit by a drunk driver. Fuck it. You know, if I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to go doing something I enjoy, whether it be, you know, uh, filming a how-to video on rebuilding a Briggs & Stratton carburetor or making love to my fiancé. I'm going to go enjoying what I enjoy doing. I can't sit back and die. Well, you'll live longer if you do this stuff. Well, that's not living in my book. That is not living. So you get this. You can't work. So now I'm trying to get on you know, disability, yeah, try that, that in itself, that in itself will agitate you, it will make your blood rise, going from person to person to person, and after about three and a half hours on the phone getting switched over and on hold, switched over to this department and on hold, next thing you know, it's the first person you fucking talk to, oh, well, I, oh, I'm sorry, I need to send you this person, you know what, fuck you. What do you do? What do you do? It's irritating as hell, isn't it? You know? So not long after I get this bad news, what happens? We're taking a Sunday drive. I'm filming a video for you guys, which I had up, but I had to take down. Uh, it didn't have to, but it's best right now, which will be going back up soon, hopefully. We're driving down the road, minding our own business. Sunday evening, about 8.30. You know, everything's cool and all at once, bam, somebody smacks us in the fucking ass in. 
over two thousand dollars worth of damage to that truck and the first thing that motherfucker says is why were you in the middle of the road where we're we supposed to drive the fucking sidewalk that's the first thing that that cocky son of a bitch and bastard said to me that's why I went off on him what the fuck are you talking about not are you guys okay oh my god you know you know traumatized our puppy he was with us Bruno, poor little Bruno didn't know what the fuck was going on crying Monkey's hitting the ass in for the second time in, what, two years. We're hurt. And he's asking, the, got the gall to ask us why we're in the middle of the road. Well, you had a, a lane on the right. You had a lane on the left. You could have went around us. There was nobody in front of us. It's all on video. Oh, he hits us in the ass in. He's in control of that vehicle. So, you know... We lawyer up, we get an attorney, because I knew this wasn't going to go good. Well, it, State Farm is his insurance company, which happened right in front of fucking State Farm and, and O'Reilly's Auto Parts. It's right side by side. State Farm happened right there. They don't want to give us anything for the truck, because their client said it was our fault we were sitting in the middle of the road number one he's still in control of that video or that vehicle if we were in the middle of the road he needs to see that okay what if we had a baby in the truck better yet what if monkey and i was on a motorcycle we would have been dead we would have been dead so now we take time out of our day monkey's day of working and stuff she's gotta she's gotta juggle we go get three estimates for the truck, okay? That's a pain in the ass, you know? Signing all this paperwork and shit. And just to get a freaking estimate, they want to know, you know, all this and that and the other. So, okay. Now, our, tur our attorney calls in State Farm, you know. You want to take care of the truck while we need, we need estimates. So I send them an estimate with, we, we got to download the app, mind you, onto her phone, go out, take all the pictures. All right, we take all the pictures that because you got to have different angles, you got to fill out how many miles, what kind of shape the truck's in, blah blah blah. And I attach an estimate with it. A couple days later, we did get an estimate from State Farm over two thousand dollars worth, which their their estimates higher than any of the ones we've got. Boom, that's the last we've heard of them. And this happened February 9th. Her last accident, they they had a, they had somebody come out because they said they don't have an insur insurance adjuster around here that could come look at the truck in in this area. Bullshit. That's that's a way to run a you know. So this this is agitating me just talking about, it. and it would agitate you too. Now the truck's fucked up. The bumpers all bumpers bent all all just kind of like I am. They don't care. But the last time they had a uh, claims adjuster come out, looked at the truck, three days later, she had a check. We haven't heard anything. They won't respond to the, to our attorney. No. Hmm. But it's our fault because we were driving down the road instead of on the sidewalk. Or, Sorry, we didn't know you was going to be driving 100 miles an hour to get out of your way. Because of your negligence. Okay? Fine. So, I can't work. I can't sell. You guys know I did the yard sales, the, the, the flea market stuff, right? Down here at the end of the road, whatnot. I was doing that four or five days a week. Sometimes six, seven, depending if it was a nice week. But no less than four to five times a week. And my three best days of selling was Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. The same days that we had to spend all this time going to the chiropractor. Then we get down to two days a week. And then guess what happens? The stay-at-home order happens. I can't sell. Now we're down to one time a week, but we're still going one time a week, but I can't go down and sell. I can't sell because of the stay-at-home order. I'm doing my part. I'm trying to do my part, you know. So, the only income I've got to help Monkey is what little bit a month I get on YouTube, which is not much. Okay? So, again, 
What am I allowed to do? You know? I can't make her do it all. I can't make her do it all. That's bullshit. Okay? So that's going on. So I ordered a bunch of stuff. One of the things I ordered, yes, was only a $3 thing. Used it for 22 seconds, it shit itself. Granted, I, I did get a refund on it. They refunded it, no problem. Okay? But that's like, son of a bitch, you know? So while all this is going on, not only this, mind you, just, just this, what I'm telling you that you're going to know about, because I do have a personal life, and I don't have to tell you guys everything. I, I don't have to make this video, but I'm sharing with you because I feel that, uh, you know, I need to explain myself why I'm upset because some keyboard happy motherfuckers want to put their two cents in worth about how, how I need to chill and calm down. This is what, this, this is just a little bit of why, okay? So we go to the chiropractor, come home, somebody who last Friday was learning to walk on their on their artificial legs legs too which that was another thing you know going him her father going through all these surgeries getting a w, double amputee he's great he's on the parallel bars learning how to walk with his training legs Wednesday he's not responding he's He's sleeping a lot. He, he can't hardly breathe. He got him on oxygen. Wednesday afternoon, 4.30-ish. Out of nowhere, he passes away. He dies. Boom. Gone. Another family member. Another loved one. My friend, whom I had time to talk to personally and stuff while her and her mom was doing things. I would sit with her dad, you know, because he was in a wheelchair. That's when he had one leg. Uh, boom, just out of the blue. Fucking kills over, dies. So now there's a lot more put on our plate. And that's understandable. Not blaming him, he can't help that. And we're glad to do it, but be understood. If you've never had to go through this, I hope you don't. But if you have, you know the the stuff that, that's involved, the phone calls, the, the, the meetings, you know, with the funeral home, the, you know, making arrangements that, you know, now, what about their stuff? You know, he's got that vet that they tore apart that I'm trying to get back together. It's an hour away. we got to get it towed out here so I can work on it here. There's a lot of stuff we've got to get out of that house. Chill. Calm down. You're going to have a heart attack. Just chill. Yeah, just chill. And then the very next day, I'm expecting a package. Two headlights, two corner lights. I get one headlight. I don't know when I'm getting the rest of it. Hmm. So, remember, you know, guys, uh, you know, th this is the kind of shit a person, a strong person, deals with. Okay? And yeah, sometimes they have a little meltdown. They have a little rant. We're allowed to, like, you've never done it. You've never got pissed at something. And you think, oh, it's in the mail. How the fuck do you know? Maybe it's back order. No, it's not on back order. Okay? So, think about that. You know, you've never got mad. You you know, so it's petty shit. No, it's all this little, little other shit leading up to it. You know, little things like deaths in the family. Yeah, little things like that. That add up to this. And then this one little thing you call a little thing that I'm depending on to keep her safe and legal. I'm just fucked now. Until they decide they want to send me my shit that I already fucking paid for. Chill. Calm down. See, this is the reason why people are found in watchtowers with high-powered rifles. Because the icing on the cake is hearing you motherfuckers, cold-hearted motherfuckers, Without any goddamn compassion for someone else, you know, just typing away about how I should chill out and calm the fuck down. It's only a package. No, it's everything leading up to it. But the icing on the cake is your fucking mouths. Your fucking mouths. So next time, before you fucking type anything, comment, stupid fucking comments on one of my videos, first of all, watch the video before. Second of all, 
Keep your damn mouth shut if you don't have my back. Like Ben and Will and Kim. You don't have my back, d don't even type anything. In fact, unsubscribe, I don't give a fuck anymore because I don't need to hear this shit. Thanks for watching. Shea Bear, the Myth Man Legend, I'm gone.